So the biggest difference for OEMs on achieving frequency delivery within the specifications that were completed a year ago and the phase and time specifications that will be ratified in March are that for in order to for 1580 to deliver phase and time of day there is actually what's called on path support required in the backhaul network so for frequency it was actually just a 1588 could be used as a unidirectional protocol uh, where uh, 1588 packets are being time stamped at the grandmaster and they go through the uh, uh, the packet backhaul network and then at the slave, at the base stations, you can recover frequency using a software algorithm, sometimes called a servo. For phase and time delivery, 1588 actually needs to operate bidirectionally. And in order to make that work and get the required accuracy, you actually need to every network element to support and participate in the 1588 uh, time stamping at the minimum, sometimes even in the actual protocol. There's two different elements that are being defined. One is the boundary clock that participates in the time stamping. The other one is the transparent clock, which also participates in the time stamping. Those two different mechanisms for on-pass support to achieve these kind of accuracies. And um, uh, that is really the biggest difference. Most of the, the um, uh, switch router Vendors today do support boundary clock and transparent clock. Um, however, the degree of, of performance, so the, the ability to meet these new class B or class A timing classes, that is spotty. So some, some of the, uh, the OEMs, the switch router vendors, already can, can uh, meet those performance classes, but many others don't.